how's it going? I've been thinking about uh, this hidden beauty. It's been, it's really been something that's come up a lot lately. And, um, you know, about being, being your true self and, you know, how your inner beauty is more important than our outward beauty and things like that. And I was remembering something that my Aunt Linda used to tell me, um, my Aunt Linda Gundolf. I have two Aunt Lindas. My Aunt Linda Gundolf used to always tell me that in order for someone to really like you for who you are, you have to let them see like your worst moment, like your the worst part of yourself. You have to let them see that in order for someone to truly know who you are and to really know or to, to like you you know they have to see the worst part of you okay and then as we grow up we know it's like we hear all kinds of things but um, I was thinking about that and why she told me that because when I was younger I struggled with a lot of things I struggled with depression and anxiety and um, probably all kinds of weird separation disorders and stuff but um, I'm gonna show I'm gonna probably put in this if I can I'm, I'm still learning how to edit this stuff and how to do all this technical stuff that it seems like everybody in the world knows how to do except for me but anyway I want to put a little clip in here as I talked to my mom and my dad this weekend this past weekend uh, was my dad's birthday <clears throat> and most of you know that I was not raised by my dad uh, my mom and dad got divorced when I was five and they separated and that was probably pretty much the end of it until I was about 18 or 19 um, but that's that's another section but um, what I'm talking about is this inner beauty and how my Aunt Linda and the reason why she would tell me that in order for someone to like you they need to see the worst part of you like let them see you have the flu for once <laughs> or you know let, let them see you without makeup or whatever because I used to wear makeup when I was very young teenager real young and people used to harp at my mom for letting me wear makeup you know because I probably very very young I don't even know like maybe 10 or 11 I probably started wearing makeup and I'm talking everything. The, the, the powder, the foundation, the eyelash, everything. Shadow, lipstick, everything. You name it, I was wearing it. And so that I would look pretty or feel pretty. It was probably more about feeling pretty than looking pretty because I'm sure it didn't look real pretty <laughs> on a little kid, you know. But I, I spent most of my life trying to create a mask for myself to cover myself up because I felt so ugly and I didn't feel pretty ever um, you know as a, as a young child I didn't feel very pretty I, you know so when I had my first daughter I took to heart what my Aunt Linda was telling me about someone truly liking me and, and someone accepting me for who I was and when I had Crystal, I really had a life-changing situation, and I decided that I was no longer going to wear makeup. I wasn't going to do my hair anymore. I wasn't going to use hairspray. I wasn't going to curl it, because I always curled my hair. I always had makeup on. I always wore lots of, you know, rings. I had rings on every finger. I was, like, everything you can think of is clinging to me, you know? And so I took all that off, and I just wanted to be a mom. I didn't want to be pretty. I didn't want to be nothing but a good mom, you know. And so I took all that off, and and I really, I don't wear makeup anymore anyway. I never did pick the habit up. I still wear, you know, I wear some makeup, eyeliner and mascara, and chapstick. That's about it, because I wanted... I wanted to be a good mom. I just wanted that. I wanted to I wanted to learn to like myself. Okay? I didn't really like myself at all. And so uh, 
I guess that's that's kind of where this started with me at was finding the beauty in life you know and it's it's like easy to find beautiful things in life but to find beauty in yourself we go to extremes we extremely go to extremes to find our inner beauty we actually cover up our beauty by all these other things that we're trying to put on ourselves you know and and so when you find out or when I found out that without the makeup without doing my hair without all that stuff you know it, it really doesn't matter anymore and so I've gotten to this point of you know finding out why did I stop doing that stuff and, and where did I get to because I did that what has happened do people really like me anymore you know and it's like that defeated all that because it really doesn't matter you know what really matters is if you like yourself or not because that's who you are you can never get away from yourself you know you're always with yourself so you have to like yourself you have to love yourself you have to learn to find the beauty in yourself whether it's through your whole life situations whether it's the way you look whether it's if you're you know you're dealing with illness or depression or addictions you know that's a that was one of my other issues I, I became an addict to many things um, but really what I'm finding out today and what I wanted to share today is that I, I pretty much did a little interview with my mom and dad because they're actually um, you know they're getting older and it's not easy to watch your parents get older so I'm trying to find, you know, the beauty and the laughter in the situation. And thank God I have parents that have a good sense of humor, okay? Both, everybody knows my mom and dad are, are true characters. And, and the, the, the thing that I'm blessed with is the fact that they stayed, you know, they never got together, never got remarried or anything like that. They've always remained friends. I've never seen them to get into an argument and yet they didn't spend their life together and now they're you know they're kind of going through some things together right now and so that's beauty to me that's beautiful because it's not on their own effort it's it's the fact that we go through life the only way we know how and if you can find laughter if you can find joy inside without finding it yourself, without putting it on or buying it or trading it for something else, you know, if you can find that within yourself and in your situation in life, you know, then you have a great, great gift from God. I like to call it like grace. You know, God's grace is so abundant that we can't even fathom it we can't touch it we can't see it we can just we can seek it and embrace it you know when we have you know when we have those moments and so is you know whenever I can get this posted I'm gonna put it with the I guess the little clip of my mom and dad sitting on the couch and they're just being their self and I'm blessed by that and so I want to share it with you guys because time is short life is short and and we have to find laughter you know that's what I'm I'm saying it's like thank God I can laugh in these moments that I have right now because there's a lot of hard things going on right now there's a lot of things that are are hard for me and it may not be the same as what other people are suffering you know everybody suffers something different but right now I'm going through a hard time and so I want to share the goodness of it and a lot of it's got to be in <laughs> oddly enough the struggle itself is bringing me joy because I'm actually seeing God's grace at work so I'm gonna get to work I'm hopping on the road so uh, actually I'm hopping on the highway so I'm gonna cut this off here and hopefully I can get this put together enough that 
that maybe somebody can be inspired by it. Find some hope in it. You know, find hope in the beauty of the not so beautiful things in life. And um, yeah, we'll talk soon. Bye bye. What'd you say? You don't remember how we met? Hmm? You don't remember how we met? Nope. He's married to my best friend. <laughs> sure, what do you remember? You remember that? I remember that. That's how I met you. I met with her. How old was you? How young were you when you met? 28. Don't look at me that way. <laughs> I think we were younger. I was younger. Of course, you're older than me anyway, so. I think that's about when it was. Yeah. So when was your last fight? Last fight? <laughs> we don't fight. We never had one of them, did we? No. Almost a lot. What? <laughs> and I was just, I know I was doing when it, I was trying to get across to her that I didn't want her in the house. I threw her out. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't fight about it. No. <laughs> oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. You just think you're real cute with that phone, don't you? Mm -hmm. Seriously, we didn't fight, did we? No. So that's probably why you're still. Getting so, along today. We're still getting along, right? Maybe so. Well, that trained him back then. Huh? <laughs> you didn't know I trained you, did you? I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know I was in a training station. Yeah. yeah. Took a while. <laughs> but he was stubborn. A lot of times he didn't listen anyway. So he's not stubborn no more? Oh, yeah. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not, though. Mm. Don't you laugh? She aged more trying to train me than she would have just let it go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe so.